Okay, today's discussion is about a reading that Paul Solomon gave, May 14th, 1992. It's reading 9552. You can read that. Anyway, this is from the Paul Solomon readings, book two. And he's got a passage in here about the higher self. And I would like to just read that part of it straight up. So here we go, Paul Solomon. Thirdly, if we may, we will speak of another presence which in some ways may seem to be a separate presence from yourself, yet it is not. This that we speak of is your intrinsic self. It is the highest self within you, the highest form or expression of self within you. It is that portion of you that is not affected at all by convention or by the rules or training, either good or evil, of the influences of those about who have influenced the formation of your personality, your character and such, in your growing up, this presence we speak of, the essential self, is that which some refer to as the inner spirit of God, or indwelling God. Some refer to it as the Holy Spirit within you. Others refer to higher self, or superconscious mind. All of those. It is, in fact, intrinsically you with no additions of opinions or programs that are the influence on personality within this life. It could well be termed the observer self, for it plays that role, and until it is called into activity, remains in that role as observer, not emotionally involved, only an observer until there is a sincere prayer or commitment of yourself by yourself as you know yourself, by all that is you, should you request that your highest mind, your intrinsic self, also called the inner self-helper, if you request this non-assertive entity or presence or personality, character, that is the true self of you beyond the influences of lower nature, as that is called upon it will respond, will always respond, will willingly give guidance in one form or another, tends to give guidance in a manner which leaves open the possibility that you might fail to notice the advice or response, or that you might see it because of knowing within yourself that having asked, there is an answer, and this the intrinsic self, the highest self, tells only the truth. Now, I picked this out because it struck me when I read it, along with a few other passages from some readings before this, as being a terrific description of the higher self that ties together the different accounts of the higher self that we get from the Urantia book, from Edgar Cayce, from definitely uh, Paul Solomon here, of course, his other accounts, and uh, what I've read of um, Douglas Cottrell, and probably, probably even Ross Peterson, I'd have to go back and go over those readings. It seemed at the time when I listened to those that he covered just about everything the other sources had covered. But what am I getting at here? Well, the Urantia book in the cosmology I'm reading at the beginning right now clearly depicts the higher self as being an offshoot of the Holy Spirit. The Urantia book goes in depth into the Trinity of the Godhead, describing what that really means as far as we can understand it at this point, as far as it can be put into English language, <laughs> I guess. Um, and 
That's, that's a critical point, I think. Before, when I was reading the Urantia book, I thought it was different from the Holy Spirit. But it, it's becoming clear that that is, in essence, what it is. And the Urantia book makes the statement that our concept of the Holy Spirit in Christianity is the, probably the most accurate of our concepts of the other persons of the Godhead, of all three. So, and, and that just by nature of who we are as man and, and what is easier for us to comprehend from our position. Um, and the superconscious mind is what Edgar Casey said right away was the source that they were talking to when he was giving readings. And this is probably the most important issue that underlies all this stuff. And that is, who in the heck are we talking to when we are talking, you know, asking questions and getting such detailed and concrete and voluminous answers from these types of deep trance channels? Who are they channeling? What are they channeling? And again and again, the answer keeps coming back from the various sources that it's the higher self. And they may use different terms for it. That's why it was so confusing with Casey. It took me a long time to even put together that he might be talking about the higher self when he's talking about the superconscious because he would describe you know different aspects I wasn't familiar with. But that's what I like about this, this statement from Paul Solomon is it takes probably every aspect of the higher self that I had ever heard of and maybe even adding a couple more and ties them all together and shows you how they actually all are the same thing. And I am now more confident than ever that that is exactly what is being contacted primarily in this type of channeling. So, and I think I'm fairly confident at this point that even when you get a Douglas Cottrell reading, you are getting his higher self. Now, there may be some communication between his higher self and your higher self at that point. I'm not sure exactly how that all works. I do understand that those things are not as separate as we may think they are, uh, or like to think they are. This just says, yeah. Um, so, hmm. And the, the Urantia book, talking about the thought adjuster, I mean... It's so important. It's, it's such a major part of the cosmology from all these sources, and it's such a consistent part. They all give us the same message. They all say that we have this spark of God within us that is actually us. It's a significant part of us that is this spark of God within us that is this higher self. And the main objective that we have at this point in our development is connecting with that higher self. Uh, the Urantia book, book calls that ultimate goal a just refusion. And uh, Paul Solomon goes into the same kind of detail about how you can actually, your mind will no longer be like right brain, left brain, split and divided and talking to itself and fighting with itself. You can be unified. This is the law of one. And in that unity, you are being unified with your higher self, with God within you. Um, so, that's, this is probably one of the first cases, well, I know it's not the very first, but this is where we're going to go with, with these presentations. Where it's really important, these sources all agree. And they, they not only agree, they shed, each source sheds new light, critical new information on a topic that's very helpful for us as we try to slog through this and the school of hard knocks and, and take our steps and make some progress. So I'll try to bring more and more of these to you as I discover them and try to do a better job of taking notes and getting some literal quotes from readings in here. Until next time, carry on.